Hello, well met. Thank you so much for stopping by. Cold Stare here, and I'm happy to bring you the very first World of Warcraft mount collecting video on YouTube. So today we're going to check out unique mounts. Okay, that means we're we're going for mounts that we can either work towards or aren't just complete RNG. So uh, we are not going to be going after Ashes of Alar. We're not going to be spending hours waiting for Time Lost Proto Drake or going after Invincible. These are really sought after iconic mounts but they're massive time sinks and they've been covered so many times. So let's go ahead and get started. First up at number 10, the Slime Serpent. We're gonna find this in Plaguefall. So if you are a really big mount collector already, you probably aren't gonna find anything on this list that's uh, new to you. But if you're a new player, if you're just beginning your journey into mount collecting, I think some of these will help you. So anyway, we're gonna head out to the Shadowlands and we're gonna head to Plaguefall. You're gonna find it right here on the map. It's just south of the Theater of Pain and Maldraxxus. I believe it has to be on Heroic or Mythic. Uh, so go ahead and enter in either one of those difficulties. If you're level 70, this should be pretty trivial. This was a pretty big challenge when it first came out in early Shadowlands, but anyway, not so much anymore. After you defeat the final boss, you're gonna use this uh, teleportation uh, pad that's gonna take you back up to the top. You're going to run over here. Now the Slime Serpent isn't there because I've already got the mount. But right where this very realistic drawing is going to appear, this is where you're going to find it. And you'll just click on it. And simple as that, you'll have your mount. But yeah, pretty creepy, bizarre looking mount. I really love it. It goes really well, of course, with Necrolord Transmog. So definitely a unique mount. Definitely worth getting. At number 9, the Frightened Kodo found in the Battle for Azeroth version of Dark Shore. This is an interesting mount because typically Kodos are only used by Horde players, and the Frightened Kodo can be used by Horde and Alliance. So go ahead and make your way out to Dark Shore. Once there, you're going to want to use a macro to try and find the Frightened Kodo right in this area circled on the map. You're going to want to use a macro because uh, most rare scanners and the like will not detect and alert you of the Frightened Kodo because it's not a hostile NPC. You have to click on it and channel a spell on it and interact with it, and that's how you get the mount. So, uh, some zones in WoW will reset after no players have been in for 15 minutes, so if you're on a smaller realm, this will work to your advantage, because you can just check the spots. If it's not up, log out, and assuming no other players are in it, you wait 15 minutes, log back in, and eventually the Kodo will be up, and you see the macro will alert you. Like I said, you normally can channel a spell on it. Uh, I already have it, so I can't. Showing you the flavor text for the Frightened Kodo. Nothing frightens a Kodo like seeing a bear with antlers. Now, this is a reference to the Terror of Dark Shore cinematic that came out during Battle for Azeroth, and you want to watch that. It's basically uh, Malfurion in his bear form attacking a, a horde caravan. Pretty cool cinematic. It'll explain its name, so I recommend you watch it. If you're on a large realm and having a really difficult time finding the Frightened Kodo, you can make a boosted character, Hearth, and then just fly over there, and you're almost certainly going to find it. At number 8, the Arcadian War Turtle, sold by Zurios in the Legion version of Dalaran. The Arcadian War Turtle costs 150 Curious Coins, and you earn those coins by doing various activities uh, in Legion. Uh, his stock can change from day to day, so if it's not there one day, just keep checking. Uh, it's going to take you a little while to earn all these if you're just starting on this. This isn't meant to be a mount you just get in one day. So you can earn the Curious Coins by doing Legion raids, world quests, defeating world bosses, doing dungeons. Uh, my best advice would be to figure out a few transmogs you want from Legion that are going to take you a while to get and just work on those. And eventually you will have earned enough of the Curious Coins to get it. Neat mount though, it's got the fiery mouth and the heavily armored and kind of the uh, cudgel thing on its tail. So really cool, really unique. Moving right along. All right, next up, the Long Forgotten Hippogriff found Azuna. Named Long Forgotten because this model was actually first data mined way back in 2007, the 2.3 patch, and then wasn't made available until Legion. So we're gonna go ahead and head out to Azuna, and what we are after are five ephemeral crystals, and I believe only one is up in the zone at a time. These are all the various spawn points they can be at. I'll try to provide a link so that you can import a TomTom -tom string or something. Anyway, once you've got that and you're all ready, you know where all the spawn points are, you're going to fly around. And bear in mind that if you die, that will completely reset this process. You'll have to start over. So if you play with war mode on, you might want to click that off. Just find a low pop realm, something. So anyway, you're going to fly around, find the five crystals. Once you found the fifth one, it'll announce an emote to the whole zone. And you'll have them out in your bag. 
And I think stuff like this is a lot more interesting than just sitting in a zone for hours and hours waiting for something to spawn. So at least it's proactive, you're flying around doing stuff. So really cool purple mount, interesting. Uh, hope you decide to go get it. All right, at number six, the Scar Traders Audic found in the Azure Span. To get your hands on this Audic, you're gonna need to get a couple neck pieces that drop from the Vault of the Incarnate Raid. So you're definitely gonna wanna work on this while Dragonflight is still a current expansion. This mount is sold by uh, a Tuscar named Tachu Kiaka, and he wants the neck piece that drops off Taros and the neck piece that drops off of Dathia Ascended. So I did this raid a lot when it was the current raid early on in the expansion. I saw both, the neck, both these neck pieces drop quite a bit, uh, but of course your mileage may vary. <laughs> um, it, it can be any difficulty, heroic, LFR, it doesn't matter. This is an interesting mount though, because as you see in this clip, it does not slow down in water. Most water mounts are fast in water, slow on land, but the Otic is unique in that. It's fast in both, so definitely want to work on getting that, so good luck. Number five on our list is the prestigious Azure Courser, a reward for reaching honor level 70, or really any of the prestigious Coursers are awesome. This is just the one I happen to select. So if you're new to the game and you've never done PvP before and you want to earn one of these, you're going to have to step out of your comfort zone and start doing some PvP. Most people like to do endgame PvP, that is raided battlegrounds, arenas, or really active in uh, world PvP. All those things earn you honor. My personal favorite way to earn honor, though, is leveling battlegrounds. Probably the the one most people like the least. Uh, it, to me, it's just a great way, a great alternative way to level your alt once you've seen the content a few times in the expansion. Uh, really fun, you'll rack up some honor pretty quick. Anyway, it's an awesome mount. It's got the skulls of your fallen foes right there. So, moving right along. At number four, the Felstorm Dragon. This is a mount I recently added to my collection too. Uh, it's found in Thaldrasses, and this is really cool because this is a Storm Drake, and up until now, Storm Drakes were, were either entirely RNG, hard to get, or you had to be really good at PvP back in Legion because it was a Gladiator mount. It's sold by Falara Night Song for 3,000 Paracausal Flakes, or it does have a chance to drop off one of the final bosses in Time Rift. So Time Rift, if you've never done them, they occur at the top of every hour, and I recommend you use the Group Finder to join a group. You see it's a full raid. It's fun, it's lighthearted, nobody's taking it too seriously. You'll earn a lot more Paracausal Flakes using a group, and you'll rack up those 3,000 Paracausal Flakes real quick. But yeah, really cool, fell, green color, definitely worth getting. Number three, the Huntmaster's Loyal Wolfhawk, found in True Shot Lodge, one of my very favorite mounts in the game. I use this all the time. It's the ultimate hunter mount. Uh, Legion just did class fantasy so well. Order halls, class specific mounts, artifacts, uh, class transmogs. So this all begins with heading out to the Broken Shore and you're gonna need to get the uh, breaching the Tomb Achievement. It begins with Nimi Bright Castle. I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm not going to show anything. This is a really fun quest line. I just want to get you started on it. Like I said, one of my very, very favorite mounts. I use this all the time. Comes in three different colors. So I'll go ahead and pr provide a link to on how to get started with that. And number two, the Saltwater Seahorse. So this is actually a pretty rare mount. Uh, according to Wowhead, only 9% of accounts have this. Uh, it's going to set you back 500 doubloons. You're going to earn those by doing Island Expeditions. This was a feature added in BFA that you use to progress your character's power by earning Azerite. You'll talk to Flynn Fairwind or Captain Rezo Kuhn, uh, depending on if you're Hoarder Alliance. So uh, Island Expeditions, if you're not familiar with them, this was, like I said, a feature added in BFA. You used it to accumulate Azerite. Azerite was used to progress your Heart of Azeroth back then. I actually did not like Island Expeditions when they first came out, but there's something really fun to do now, like like right where we're at in the expansion, we're at the end of a season, at the end of a raid tier, waiting for new content. You can earn mounts, transmogs, all kinds of things. They go by really quick now, so you queue for them solo, you have a chance to earn the doubloons, and you'll get your mount real quick. So, moving right along. And here we are, friends. Number one, the Soaring Spell Tome. Uh, the holy grail of mounts for me. Not time lost, not invincible, none of that. This for me is numero uno. I love this mount. I use this more than any other mount I have. Uh, this is a reward for a tour of towers, completing all the mage tower scenarios. And if you've followed my channel at all, you'll know I am a mage tower junkie. 
right? I just live for the mage tower. I think it's so fun. You step in and there's no hiding, right? The, the boss's eyes are on you and if you wipe, it's on you. And I just love that. I think it makes you a better player. It's so much fun. I do mage towers all the time. I love sharing them with you guys. So if you've never done it before, please do it. Like I said, you need this achievement, a tour of towers. There's seven different seven different scenarios. Some are harder than others, but this is a good expansion to do them. In Shadowlands, getting a tour of towers was very difficult, and now it's it's a lot more reasonable. So, uh, like I said, you're going to come out a better player, a lot of good rewards to get, and just a beautiful mount. I never get tired of riding this as a really great slash mount special effect. Uh, anyway, I highly recommend you work on this. You will not regret it. Well, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. I appreciate it. If you want to see anything else from me, feel free to comment in the box below. Otherwise, if you want to see anything else from me, please feel free to hit the subscribe button. Free to you. It really helps me. And yeah, I will see you in Azeroth. Bye! <laughs>